We received almost uh, over 30 uh, proposals. We thank all the scholars who submitted uh, their paper to the conference. And of course, because we have one day conference, we have to be uh, very uh, selective. Uh, we have, as uh, Professor Asma mentioned, we have great <coughs> panels. But let me mention here about the, how we choose the title of the conference. Democracy denied, political human rights, and policy implications. This is the 22nd annual conference of the CSI. And the whole, that's almost two decades of conferences, the main theme of the conference about democracy and Islam, and how to build such relationship. And this is why the center has been known as, as for those things. I still remember that the first time when I met Dr. Radwan, I would ask also to thank him. He's amazing in fundraising. He's sending almost 100 emails every day. And I think he's upgrading the email. Uh, when I met the first time I met with him in 2005, he was the main idea that has, that's the Arab world or the Muslim world be able to build alliance between the Democrats, the Islamists and non-Islamists. And this is why it's been later, proved later in the uh, Tunisian model in 2010, that's, that's building a nice who kept the democracy in Tunisia at least for 10 years. Uh, and this is why I think we revisited now again this theme through this conference and through this title. This is why we have two panels focused on the lessons learned from the Arab Spring and the failed transition. And of course, we cannot deny it. since the creation of Israel in 1948, it's the Middle East region became the hotspot of the international intervention. Uh, and this is, it became an, an impact factor on the democratization process in the region. Now, there is no exception. All the regions in all countries in the region, they host one or two military, foreign military bases. It became the most the most, of course, uh, 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 tension uh, region regarding number of refugees, regarding number of the conflict, and this is why it's always important to revisit the region again and how democracy and Islam together can contribute into peaceful resolution. I want to thank everyone who's been here and we are looking to a very successful balance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I also wanted to welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, showing up uh, uh, early morning. Uh, we apologize for some of the technical difficulties we are having with the projection. And hopefully we'll get it working uh, very soon. Uh, I wanted to also tell you that we have over 85 people who registered to attend this conference. So hopefully we will get uh, more people uh, who will attend later in the, uh, in the, during the rest of the day. And we have 75 people also watching us uh, live on, on Zoom. So we are, uh, you know, this is the, the new virtual world that we live in. Is a lot of people are watching us on Zoom. Even some of them are here in Washington, D.C., but just easier to, to watch on Zoom than, than to go to a conference. But the reason we have insisted on, the, on doing the conference in person, in person is I think it's still very valuable for people to meet uh, at least once a year and to uh, stay in touch with each other and to talk and chat with each other, not only virtual, not only read papers or read books, but only talk with people. Uh, because these are tough times. We are all going through very difficult times, very challenging times uh, for the Arab world, for the Muslim world, and for the cause of democracy uh, worldwide. And it's only by uh, staying close to each other, by seeing each other, uh, that we strengthen each other and that we can continue the, the fight for freedom and for democracy uh, in, the, in the Arab world. Uh, I just also want to conclude that to say that when we started CSID, it was 25 years ago. Uh, it was here at Georgetown uh, 25 years ago. See how 25 years go by so quickly? Uh, I had no, uh, no dream or no expectation that we will see democracy in the Arab world in 25 years. But we didn't see it. We 
It didn't last very long, but we did see democracy. And I went back to Tunisia in the last 10 years, and we lived in a democracy for almost 10 years uh, in Tunisia. Not a perfect democracy, but a democracy. Uh, and at times, I felt more free to be in Tunisia than to be here in the United States in those 10 years. Because we had Trump, if you remember, in those 10 years. Uh, but now we have some major setbacks. We have to continue the fight. Uh, if, if we don't see democracy in the Arab world, hopefully our children will see it. If our children don't see it, hopefully our grandchildren will see it. But we have to start the fight now. We can't wait. We have to, we have to fight for democracy now. We have to do everything we, we, we can to make it uh, as quickly as possible. We have found that the enemies of democracy are also very strong in the region and in the world. And they also have adapted and they also have learned to work together to, to, to destroy uh, the democratic transitions uh, that we had uh, in the Arab world, uh, especially in Tunisia. So, you know, we have to continue. We have to uh, remain steadfast and persevere in these difficult and challenging times. Hope, hoping that, inshallah, things will get better. Inshallah, at the end of the day, reason uh, uh, will, will win over hatred. Uh, love of peace and love of uh, other human beings will win over racism and hatred and the wars that we see all over the world. And I believe there is a very, very strong link between lack of democracy and what's happening in Gaza today. Uh, but that's one of the topics we will be discussing mm -hmm. in our conference today. So again, thank you very much. I don't want to make a long speech, but we really appreciate your coming here. And uh, we look forward to a very uh, interesting and stimulating uh, conference, uh, and hopefully with, with important uh, uh, review or recommendations for the future. What, what can we do better? What, what should we do better? What do we need to focus on in the next five to 10 years? Uh, life is very short as the last 25 years have proven, but let's make it uh, impactful. Let's make, let's make it worth it. Let's make our lives here on earth meaningful. Uh, that's always been my dream. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with what we have been doing and what we are doing even though there are setbacks. But I think they are to be expected. They were, they were expected. We have to learn from those setbacks and, and continue the fight. So with that, uh, I'd like to invite the first panel to please come to the uh, podium and uh, let's get started. Thank you very much.